Tom. Um, and I have the honor today to introduce uh, one of my good friends and neighbors, um, Michael Grubiak. Um, he is the labor leader of the year. He's he receiving that honor. Um, just a little introduction about Mike. Um, I first met him um, a few years ago when I first started getting involved in politics at my, uh, at my then boss's uh, uh, dining room table, um, Senator Shelley Mayer. And since then, I've learned how to be a better advocate, better operative, and a better steward of bringing positive change to our community. Um, Mike is a tireless, uh, tireless fighter for public, uh, public, uh, uh, public educators uh, through his work in NYSET, as well as the um, greater labor movement at large. Um, again, it's a great honor for me to introduce the labor leader of the year, Michael Grubiak. Great, thank you so much, Vincent. Um, so good evening, everyone. I would uh, just like to thank uh, all the dignitaries and honorees tonight for joining us. Uh, it's nice to take a break during this election and really reflect on why our work is so important, uh, especially this year. Uh, again, I'd especially like to thank uh, Jovan Richards and Vincent Fields, who have been such an inspiration to me in our home county of Westchester. And, uh, you know, special thanks to uh, my family and my wife, Kiara, for constantly dealing for the past decade uh, with me telling them who to vote for, when to vote from school board, uh, all the way up to president. Uh, so like any good organizer, uh, I want to tell you a story tonight. Uh, about a month ago, my wife Kiara and I were sitting down at our kitchen table. Uh, we felt <clears throat> exhausted after months of uncertainty and, and anxiousness. And uh, usually we spend this time checking in. Uh, but this night, we both asked ourselves a simple question. Are we proud uh, to be an American in this moment? The answer should have been obvious, but we both paused. I wanna tell you, we thought about all the opportunities this country has provided our families in only a few generations, uh, but we didn't. <clears throat> we thought of George Floyd, Daniel Prude, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Armory, Kamal Flowers, Alton Sterling, Jonathan Price, Philando Castile, who by the way, <clears throat> was a proud member of Teamsters Local 320, working as a cafeteria worker in the St. Paul schools and countless others. How can any of us stand up and say we are proud to be an American in this moment? Since 1619, this continent has had a violent, systematic control over the many to benefit the few. To this day, <clears throat> the 13th Amendment of our Constitution allows for the enslavement of others if they commit a crime. But the beautiful thing about this country is the fact that so many things are not set in stone. Throughout our history, change makers have seen what America is in their present and dreamt of a better tomorrow for the future. When Daniel Prude was brutally murdered earlier this year, organizers in Rochester, including many of our NYSED members, flipped the script and focused the conversation on concrete ways to prevent this from happening again. Through organizing, education, and agitation, they successfully pressured the Rochester City Council to address overfunding of the police department and fund an independent investigation. They are, always, they are also advocating for the passage of Daniel's Law, which will have trained mental health professionals respond to mental health calls instead of law enforcement. The Rochester organizers make me proud to be an American. Much like the organizers in Rochester today, in 1913, labor leader Louis Tychus dreamt of a better world and changed labor in this country forever. Louis organized, educated, and agitated his fellow coal miners in Colorado to stand up to one of the richest men at the time, John D. Rockefeller. Their demands were clear and revolved around respect and dignity for their work. The unprecedented strike lasted almost a year, ending on April 20th, 1914, when the National Guard came in using machine guns and fired into the colony where strikers were living. Approximately 21 people died, minors, wives, children, and Louis Tychus himself. The Ludlow Massacre, as it would be called, was a watershed moment in the American labor movement. A congressional report preceding the incident was influential in promoting child labor laws and an eight-hour workday, 
that we take for granted today. Louis Tychus makes me proud to be an American. He led the way for a young Al Shanker in 1960 to stand up once again in a strong American tradition of organizing, educating, and agitating. This time it was for educators in New York City. Educators were treated with little respect. Most notably, a teacher faced two years of mandatory unpaid maternity leave after they gave birth. Al Shanker led an unprecedented citywide strike in November of 1960 that while did not gain major concessions, started a movement that led to the first ever citywide contract. This movement led to the creation of the New York State United Teachers in 1972 and our national union, the American Federation of Teachers, where Al served as president from 1974 to 1997, which now represents 1.7 million school employees. Today, NYSED represents 675,000 members in New York, and our local leaders have been working nonstop to ensure all students and staff are safe during the COVID outbreak. Al Shanker makes me proud to be an American. Although many of the strongest American ideas are fundamentally flawed, we must continue to organize, educate, and agitate towards a better world. This country gives all of us the opportunity to rise up and demand our rights, dignity, and power within our political institutions. I thank you for this recognition, but more importantly, I wanna thank all of you for being the change makers we need now in the state of New York and the country as a whole. Being with all of you tonight makes me proud to be an American. Thank you so much.